Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, part five of the $4,000 Ultimate No Compromise System Build video series. If you're new to this series, the previous parts will be linked below, but this is all about Windows performance review. Part one was parts review. Part two was the long vlog that explained the reasoning behind the system build, the why behind the component choices and why this exists. Part three was the build. Part four was Windows installation with drivers, firmware, BIOS, etc., all that fun stuff. And this is all about Windows performance review. Coming up soon will be SSD performance, Windows storage spaces, overclocking, and all sorts of cool videos. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click subscribe right down right there if uh, you want to get notifications to future videos. Windows Performance Review. This video is all about general Windows application performance. I am going to try and do this as close to all my other Windows Performance Reviews as possible. If you're new to my channel or you haven't seen them, if you search in my channel for Windows Performance Review or if you look at other computers I review, I do this test to give you a general idea of what the in Windows experience is. And I do it similar from machine to machine so you can get a rough comparison and an idea of how different computers perform. Note, this is not going to include 3D rendering or video uh, editing or video rendering. Those will come up in future videos. This is all about general Windows performance. How well does it browse the web, play videos, multitask, etc.? For this much money, it should do great. Note, for anybody who sees the price tag, remember half of the price is storage. Really, it's a $2,000 computer with $2,000 worth of storage bolted onto it. The reasons why were detailed in part two, the long vlog. So, normally I open these with a reboot. Because I have 10 drives in here, and because it's the X99 platform, I'm not going to. Let me just tell you that the reboot time is BIOS initialization, not the SSD. Once it starts booting, it's in Windows in five seconds flat. It, however, takes quite a while to initialize the drives and go through the BIOS sequence. It does take longer to reboot an X99 platform, or at least this one, than it does the Z170 and the Z97 platforms. So we're gonna skip that this time. Rest assured that the Sam, uh, Samsung 950 Pro in here boots Windows in five seconds flat. So the first thing we're gonna do is download Chrome. And we'll hit download. Now the actual download speed of a web browser is of course dependent on your internet connection for the downloading part. But keep in mind that web browsers are not very large these days. Okay, that was the download, that's fairly quick. This installing part is the computer. Our boot drive is the 950 Pro. And then we are going to do Firefox. And let's download that. Download. It won't publish yet, but the upcoming SSD video, which is a side note I've already filmed, I'm doing these in a little bit different order. There we go. Don't import anything, next. There we go, now we'll close that. Don't warn me, open this youtube.com slash c slash tech deals who else there's a handsome mug i've already filmed the ssd uh, uh before I've, I've been playing with this for many hours and doing a variety of things with it um the 950 pro is awesome don't expect miracles in what you're about to see it's a specialized drive that most people shouldn't buy. My recommendation for a machine of this caliber is either an 850 Evo or a SanDisk Ultra 2. With all these cores, how many videos do you think we can open? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18. I've never done 18 before. Let's make them all HD. I'm gonna click the theater button to make them all go into theater mode. This forces them into HD. When they are running at standard size, they are running at uh, 480p. So this is gonna force them all to 720p and many of these videos are at 60 frames per second. 720p at 60 frames a second 
is or should be about the same amount of data as 1080p at 30. 18 videos, wow. Try that on your computer. Now you might ask, why would I do this? Okay, I completely understand. No reasonable situation is going to have anyone, anyone reason, any normal situation with a normal desktop computer, are you ever gonna open 18 videos? I completely get that. This is simulating heavy load on the computer. You may run um, other programs. You may have five or six different programs that you multitask. You may have tons of web browsers open. Maybe you're listening to music. You've got 10 things loaded in the task tray, which I don't yet. I will, I'll have 15 to 20 by the time I've got all my programs on here. But rather than set that up on machines, this is just meant to stress the system. It stresses the CPU, it stresses the network connection, it stresses the RAM. Hey, there's an ad playing. Don't we all love ads? It helps me pay for all this fun stuff. So they're all playing. I'm only clicking through them so that you can in fact see that they are in fact playing. Hey, there's World of Warships, one of my favorite games. There's World of Tanks. Pinball, yeah, I know pinball. I, I tried it, what can I say? Oh, Lara Croft. So we're now playing 14 HD videos. 18 HD videos. I've been messing with this for about eight hours now. My brain's a little bit fried. So we're now playing 18 HD videos. We're gonna leave those up and we are gonna open Chrome. And we are gonna go to Yahoo. Again, if you've watched my previous videos, this will be familiar. If it's not, let me explain. Yahoo's website is terrible. Their coding is terrible. I'm not talking about their content. If you like their portal, if you like their website as content, great, that's awesome. But the technical design of their website is slow and it's why I use it. So I'm gonna click on sports and I'm gonna click on fantasy, NFL, NCAAF, whatever that is, Major League Baseball, uh, that's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 Yahoo tabs. Go into Chrome on your computer. The, the other reason I'm doing this is anybody can replicate it. If I run specialized testing software, you can't necessarily easily test it on your own machine. Try opening Chrome, go to sports, and open 11 different tabs at the same time and see how well your machine does. Maybe your machine does well. How does it do while also playing 18 HD videos? Now the reason I say Yahoo's page is rough is because all of the pictures, all of the text boxes, all of the frames on this page represent hundreds of individual web requests to Yahoo and the various ad sites that are serving ads. Opening 11 tabs, I generated between probably five to 10,000 individual requests to Yahoo just by clicking on all those. That puts a strain on the memory, it puts a strain on the CPU, it puts a strain on the network port. That is a lot to open up at once. That performs really, really well. Wow. I've had some machines that struggled with four or five tabs, but of course it should, it's expensive. $2,000 plus $2,000 of storage. Six cores, 12 threads, 4.2 gigahertz i7 6800k nice who won power rankings mercedes benz may jump into formula e well okay fair enough that runs beautifully now let's go open firefox so i'm leaving those yahoo pages open which are not static the ads are dynamic the pages auto refresh amazon.com my first placed hello dress shop girl if you go to amazon.com, sign into the webpage, and you're not logged into an Amazon account, Dress Shop Girl. You know, one of these days they're gonna take Dress Shop Girl away from me and I'm gonna be sad. I'm gonna be like, aw, she doesn't dance for me anymore. Yeah, I know. By the way, yes, I have shown that to my wife and yes, she rolls her eyes. She thinks it's amusing, sort of. Let's go to the i7-6800K, shall we? 
$439 is what that's currently running for. It's $100 more expensive than the i7 6700K, 50% more cores, 50% more threads, double the level three cache, double the memory bandwidth. Okay, I'm not gonna do a pitch on the computer. Um, just for fun, what happens if we do X99-A2? Oh, that went up $20, okay. The uh, prices change on Amazon all the time. Keep in mind, in most of my videos, I'll mention price at some point. Amazon prices, the cha changes the prices constantly. When I first reviewed this computer, the motherboard was 230, now it's 250. Give it a week, it'll be back down there. Uh, we'll go and pull up GTX 1080 for the win. Hey, it's in stock. This was out of stock last week. Amazon has the for the win back in stock, $680. That's expensive. But it's currently the fastest reasonable graphics card you'll find. All right, let me just go ahead and open up various tabs. All electronics. That is silky smooth. I scroll through this, look how smooth and responsive that is. That is really nice. Laptops couldn't be smoother. They've got that on sale. 240, wow, you know, that is still a heck of a deal. $340 for a 15.6 inch i3 laptop. That's a full HD screen. I've reviewed that many months ago. My 17 year old nephew has that computer. One of these days I should just do a general about me vlog, I suppose, when I talk about this stuff. Monitors, monitors, awesome. I recently reviewed this $200, 32 inch IPS 1080p screen. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous monitor. By the way, that's not what's currently sitting here. Acer, 32 inch, there it is. The monitor you're looking at is this, 4K, 99% sRGB color compliance, um, IPS 187 degree viewing angle. I own multiple of these monitors. It is an awesome screen, heavy at 28 pounds. It's an awesome screen, $787. Yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but you know what? People buy these. There's the Acer Predator 34 inch curves, which is about the same screen size, actually a little bit smaller, about 5% smaller than this, wider but shorter. It's about this tall, but a little further wide. 1440p, five million pixels, this is eight million pixels, and it's $1,250. I have debated buying one of those to review. $1,250, that's, that's, not, that's nuts. How are our videos going? Hey, there's the uh, build video for this computer, part three build. Two hours, 17 minutes and 38 seconds. That took me six hours to film. There were cuts and I took a break for lunch and a variety of other things, but yeah, that, that took me a long, there's actually three and a half hours of footage cut down to two hours, 17 minutes, taking out as many bits as I could. And that is, oh, that's the build video as well. It auto played, it went to something else. There's my Are You Prime Hot Deal Alert video. Prime is awesome. If you are not a Prime member, you should be. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. Yeah, I put that at the end of most of my videos. This isn't even remotely struggling. Uh, we are using 40% of our RAM. We're using 12.9 gigabytes. Bandwidth, it's taking about 20, 20, 25 megabits a second to stream all those videos, give or take. Well, it's bursting to 30. Our CPU usage, 25%. <sighs> and everything closes right up. That's crazy. Can you do everything I just showed you on an i7-6700K? Yes, you can. It has enough CPU to do it. This isn't really a fair representation of what this machine gets you, nor should you get an i7-6800K for what I just showed you. 
even playing 18 HD videos, even opening, what was it, 11 Yahoo tabs and I don't know, 10 Amazon tabs, you can multitask and do all that you want with this machine in Windows. But the real reason to buy this, and it's not gaming, it's content creation, video editing, video rendering, 3D animation, virtual machines, uh, software development, it's anything that involves a lot of data transfer, a lot of data movement, and that's not in this video. I'm going to be doing some of those videos coming up, which I haven't done before, but I'm going to figure out a way to do a decent test or something on those. I haven't filmed them yet, but I will. Consider this. It's about $180 more for this than the i7-6700K. Single core performance, this is about 5% slower. Multi-core performance, it's 30% faster. That strikes me as a deal. I don't have any regrets. In fact, I wish three years ago when I built my uh, current machine, my i7-4770K, the original Haswell, I should have done Ivy Bridge E. If I had done Ivy Bridge E with six cores, 12 threads, this wouldn't have been necessary. If you have Ivy Bridge E, this isn't worth upgrading to. The, the performance difference between Ivy Bridge E, Haswell E, and then Broadwell E, 10%. It's minor. Uh, it's not worth upgrading those generations. And in fact, the same thing applies. I need to do an updated CPU overview. The same thing applies to standard desktop chips. If you have an Ivy Bridge i5 or an i7 and you want to know whether you should get a Skylake i5 or i7, no, not really. There's not that huge a difference. There might be 15, 20% difference between a, um, an i5. 57, uh, 3570, you have to think of the model numbers, an i5-3570 and an i5-6600. Are you going to notice that? Is that worth spending all the money to change everything? Probably not. I'm hoping that Cabby Lake, e, uh, Cabby Lake coming out in, I think, January or February is going to make a difference. But if you don't have a six core system or you want to render videos, if you want to edit videos, if you want to do heavy multitasking, this is a beast. Like this video if you like it. Don't if you don't. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button down there. Questions and comments go below the video. As always, check out the video description for my other links to videos on this computer, most of which are more interesting than this one. This kind of Standard Windows performance testing on this is a little bit uh, underkill because of the power of the machine. And as always, check out the video description to uh, go to Amazon and Newegg where I bought all these parts and you should too because I would appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.